Hello, everyone. How's it going? I got to admit that I made a tragic mistake the other day. I went onto some internet forums where some grouchy know-it-alls were espousing their knowledge to the world. And they were talking about Micro Four Thirds and how it's insane to spend any kind of money on that system, that it's dead, that it's no good, that all the other sensors are so much better, and that's just not good enough. And those people were insane. And I was, yeah, I was punished. I shouldn't have gone to the internet forums. But the idea is the question that you and other people should ask, what is it good enough for? And what do you need out of a camera? And I have to say that I'm really uh, confident that most people out there that are buying new cameras, a lot of the you know, consumers who are walking to a camera store are just wondering what camera to buy. The Micro Four Thirds and something like the Olympus OM-1, which I have right here, is more than good enough. And here are four reasons why I think so and why I love using this thing. The number one reason I love this thing is that it is absolutely wildly compact. Let's check out this camera bag and what I've been bringing with me like almost everywhere. In it, you can see the OM-1 with the Olympus 12 to 40 2.8 lens. This lens is really, really awesome. It covers a 24 to 80 millimeter full frame range, which is really just wildly versatile for storytelling, right? This thing almost never comes off my own one because I can get wide landscapes like this, cool portraits like this, and just fantastic close-up details like this, all with one lens. The magic of Micro Four Thirds, I've also gotten this bag, the 25 millimeter 1.7 for lower light situations, and this 30 millimeter macro for absolutely crazy, highly detailed close-up shots. And finally, the heaviest part of the kit is the Panasonic 100 to 400, 4.5 to 6.3. This thing gives me a 200 to 800 millimeter range for when I just have to get a shot of a bird or something in the distance. All of this in one very small bag. So for me, be able to put all that and take it out and not be limited by focal range, is pretty powerful. I'm not saying there's not something special about taking one lens out, but if I'm gonna go on a photo walk and I might be getting a wide angle shot of a landscape, but I also see a bird, I can just in one small bag, switch that camera lens on there and get that bird too. That is really, really awesome. Reason number two that this thing is so much fun to use is it's got some wild and fun to use in camera stuff that I am just finding more useful and more powerful than I thought possible. It's got in camera focus stacking which honestly, I didn't think I was gonna use that much. I usually do focus stacking with my Fujis and just combine them in Photoshop. But when I started to use the focus stacking here, holy cow, this thing rocks pretty good. So here's a shot of an X-T5 that I shot just with a standard lens. And you can see that the camera is a little bit blurred in the background. I turned on focus stacking and I wasn't using the tripod and I captured this shot. The camera just combines it all inside of the camera and I can take that and I can post it to my blog. I can post it anywhere I want and you're gonna get a decent product shot just like that. Another thing that's really nice to have is the live ND filter, right? So I can go out and use wide apertures in super bright light, activate the live ND filter and still be able to get good background blur. It's also great for creative uses like ICM. So it gives you a little bit of a preview on the screen and then you can go out and kind of get a little bit of a judgment on what your camera movement photos might look like and it's a lot of fun to use in the field like this. The high res mode is probably my favorite though. Just one press the button and I can go to a 50 megapixel handheld mode. In many more instances than I thought possible, this camera punches way above its weight and it's given me some really high quality 50 megapixel files. And I'm not even talking about the 80 pixel mode yet. The 80 pixel mode is more impressive. So I've been shooting macro shots, trying to get some really, really giant prints for a company that I work for that does wall size art. The 80 megapixel macro mode on this is giving me absolutely stunning results. So here's a photo I took of an agate. And as you can see, this is it at full size. And then if we go down to 100% and we're zooming way, way in there, the micro detail, the amount of contrast, everything looks fantastic. Again, this thing can allow you to punch way above its weight. The third thing that really impresses me is how fast this thing is. It's got a stack sensor, so the autofocus is just lighting quick. I love using the X100V as my former daily driver, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna switch to this because of how much confidence this gives me that it's gonna get the shot. The X100V was not super slow, but this is just like lightning. It's so accurate. It's so much nicer to be able to use in the field. And I know that handling and the way a body feels is completely subjective, right? This camera body feels beautiful in my hands. I have a place for my pinky, even though this is smaller than some of my other cameras, which is pretty awesome. And it just feels really good to pull it out of a bag and know that I'm not gonna just get an accurate, very nice shot. It also feels good while I'm doing it too. The last thing that impresses me is image quality. And you'll hear a lot of people kind of uh, repeating what they've heard in marketing terms as far as you have to have a larger sensor for higher quality images. And 
just as a side note, yes, larger sensors give you better image quality in general, right? Depending on what you're using it for, a larger sensor is good. That's why I have a GFX, a medium format camera that does 100 megapixels and it's absolutely incredible. This is just as good as far as image quality, but just for different reasons, right? So you have to remember what are you using the camera for? There are so many photographers today who are shooting for social media. They're shooting for their friends and their family. And why can't the OM-1 fulfill their needs? And it absolutely can. Don't forget, right, that the core of photography is crafting an image. It's taking the light that you have and it's doing something special with it, right? So using composition, getting in close, telling a story. And no matter what camera you have in the world, you need to be able to do that first. And this camera in those situations when you're crafting something beautiful can do an amazing job. Again, we have to come back to the idea of what is your equipment good enough for? To kind of illustrate that, let me show you some of the recent prints that I've sold on my Etsy shop. Here's one of a classic Omaha Stadium, Rosenblatt, way back in 2003, and it still sells in my shop today, right? I shot this with the Canon 10D. It was a six megapixel camera that was a revolution at the time, right? Another shot here from the 10D that I saw in my Etsy shop also looks fantastic, even printed as a 16 by 20. So again, good enough for what? And for me, for my Etsy shop and for what I'm trying to do with this camera, it is more than good enough. It is providing me the ability to have a wide range of focal lengths in a small bag. It's giving me confidence that I'm gonna get a great shot because the autofocus is lighting quick and it's super light. I just wanna use it. I wanna pick this up and take pictures with it. And at the core, it is exactly the camera that I'm looking for. And I think more people should give a camera like the OM-1 a chance. They should give it a shot. I think you'll be wildly impressed. And yes, there are some situations that the OM-1 does not do a great job. High ISO and the files are not exactly as malleable as some of the other files you get. But again, if we're crafting a good image using good light and you know what you're doing with a camera, you're gonna be able to do incredible things with this thing. This is one fun, capable, and extremely powerful camera and I can't wait for the spring and summer to get out there and take some long hiking adventures and get out there and get more amazing shots out of this thing.